after the release of the Magnificent Century TV series, Sultan Solomon, played by Holly Turgenge, became one of the most popular historical characters around the world. But while the fans of the series admired the brutal and handsome Sultan, historians unanimously insisted that reality was very different from the silver screen. And the real Solomon, in fact, was not all like a hero from the Magnificent Century. So what did Sultan Solomon the Magnificent really look like, and why would you definitely dislike him? How would you find his neck and teeth? And what would you qualify as the most repulsive in his appearance? Did he have an affair with the head eunuch? What would you just be shocked by in his relationships with women? And why would you definitely disagree to spend a night in his bed? He was called the greatest sultan of the Ottoman dynasty, and it wasn't just flattery. Sultan Solomon carried out large-scale reforms. His conquests significantly expanded the borders of the Ottoman Empire. Under him it experienced its heyday. It seems that you can easily find out what he really looked like. After all, many of his portraits have come down to our days. They depict a man with a European typeface. Not handsome, of course, but nice looking. But in Islam it's forbidden to depict living beings, and all these portraits, as well as the portraits of the Huram and their children, were never drawn from life. So they were very far from the originals. The information of European diplomats who saw Solomon during his lifetime and his subjects, who also left notes, contradict each other quite often. After analyzing all the materials, historians came to the conclusion, although Solomon the Magnificent looked a bit better than his father, Selim I, you wouldn't describe him as handsome at all. His appearance was not for everybody, so to say. The Venetian Benedetto Ramberti, who served in the embassy, describes the great Polish as follows. His neck is long and very thin, and other parts of his body are disproportionately long, badly cut and sewn together. They also know that Solomon has disproportionately long arms, like his ancestor, Sultan Arhangazi. Such disproportionality and discord of the whole image of the Sultan were complemented by the following details. In his report, Pietro Bragadino described the Sultan as a pale man with a sickly look. But Benedetto Ramberti, already familiar to us, reported that his face was swarthy, with a greyish tinge, as if it was smoked. Well, the most important thing about this handsome man is his bad and yellow teeth. However, given the Ottoman's passion for sweets, this wasn't surprising. But there is something else. On this grey face was a huge nose. Benedetto Ramberti tactfully points out, he had an aquiline nose, quite large compared to his other facial features. But his eyes were small, deep-set and brown. At the same time, many contemporaries noted the very heavy and sharp look of the Lord, which was called a falcon look, and compared to a sharp sword. But the ruler didn't wear a brutal and beautiful beard like Halid Ergensch did in the series. Only during his military campaigns he grew a beard, but returning to top copy, he always shaved it off. But he had a moustache, long and red, according to European diplomats. And finally, the real Solomon could hardly walk around the palace so proudly, he rather waddled. 
Firstly, according to some reports, he was a bit overweight, since he loved feasts very much. Secondly, he had very crooked legs, because he had spent all his life in the saddle since early childhood. Eyewitnesses' opinion differ greatly in one more point, namely how tall he was. Someone wrote that the Sultan was tall. Others said that he was no taller than 1 meter 65 centimeters. By the way, his beloved harem was most likely one and a half meter tall. And here is how one of the European diplomats, Pietro Bregadina, described her. A short woman with a masculine build and a long nose sticking out from under a shawl. Such a harsh reality. You can say, appearance is not the point. But the real Sultan Solomon I also didn't behave at all like in the series. It seems that this undoubtedly great man had two different personalities. One of them wrote magnificent poems, patronized poets and artists, have the poor, and the second one was cruel and vicious and the tears and blood of innocent people did not bother him too much. Under the influence of Hiram, he executed his own son and then his closest friend, Ibrahim Pasha, with whom he even slept in the same bed, although he swore in his youth that Ibrahim Pasha would never be executed. He was also cruel to women. So, according to legend, he ordered about 500 ladies of easy virtue to be drowned in the Bosphorus. Although it seems to be just a legend, historians say the screen writers of the magnificent century greatly softened the true mores of that era. The society was shown much more secular than it really had been. But most importantly, Solomon himself and his entourage are shown far less cruel than they really were. The famous German historian of the 19th century, George Weber, wrote that Solomon was a real tyrant, and neither kinship nor merit saved anybody from his suspicion and cruelty. He was very harsh and ruled all his numerous women with an iron rod. Everyone was afraid of him, because any conflict could end with the severe head of an intriguer. In general, it is better to stay away from such insidious and dangerous people. The further, the better. Sultan Solomon was so feared all over the world that the King of France forbade the French to dance peer dances after Sultan Solomon disapproved of this innovation and expressed concerns about the station reaching them. In the series The Magnificent Century, all Solomon does is deal with the numerous inhabitants of his harem. But most of the time of his 46-year reign, he spent on military campaigns. He traveled more than 50,000 kilometers, but not driving a comfortable car, but on a horse. Even physically, he couldn't see his wives and concubines so often. And the very life of the harem from the series was also far from reality. Specialists in the history of the Ottoman Empire are especially amused by how freely wives and concubines go whenever they want. In addition, in that era the harem was also a kind of an institute for noble maidens. Not only the Sultan's wife with children and concubines lived there but also just pupils from noble families who didn't plan to get in the Sultan's bed at all. They simply received a good education there, so after that they could get married successfully. But if you are not scared, there is another reason why you wouldn't want to be in the arms of the real Solomon the Magnificent. The mightly Sultan never slept alone. There was also a guard around his bed for safety. 
even when his wife or concubine came to him. Do not hope that it was dark and nothing could be seen. Lighted candles were in the corners of the bed and brightly illuminated the chambers. The duty of the guards was constant monitoring of everything that was happening, and if the sultan could touch the candle suddenly, the guards had to remove it immediately. Another disappointment, the sultan was very fond of silence and didn't like to talk. So there were many deaf people in his environment, and the rest, including concubines, had to learn sign language. But if all this doesn't scare you anyway, then we hasten to assure you, you still wouldn't have a chance to be in his bed even if you had entered the harem. At first, Haram didn't let anyone get close to him, but then he refused concubines and he swore love and fidelity to his past beloved. Harim records confirm that he really remained faithful to her under her death and no longer invited the inhabitants of the harem to his chambers. However, not only girls were taken into the harem, but also boys who were turned into eunuchs. Eunuchs were considered to be of the middle sex. Allegedly, many sultans were involved with them. So, the main eunuch of Solomon, uh, by the way, in the series is shown another one, left notes according to which the magnificent sultan summoned the eunuch from time to time to relieve tension after the death of her ram. He wrote that he visited the sultan every Friday. This report allegedly survived to this day, but we couldn't find evidence of this version. But the Turkish historian Nedim Gürsel even proposed an unusual version that Solomon's true love was not Hiram, but Ibrahim. Among other things, he studied the Sultan's personal letters and claimed that the Sultan and the Grand Vizier were connected not only by friendly relations. For this reason, Ibrahim also could dislike Hiram. Officially, this theory hasn't been confirmed in any way. But now, listen to what diplomats from Europe wrote about him. I quote, Abraham is loved by the Sultan so much. The Sultan cannot be without him. Abraham very often sleeps in the palace of the ruler in the same bed with him, so that his head is in contact with the head of the ruler. Every day the Lord writes him several notes with his own hand and sends them with his mute servant, and Ibrahim writes to him in response, so it can be concluded that the Lord cannot live without Abraham. There is a lot of evidence that it was he and not Hiram who ruled the powerful Padishah. Such an irresistible ruler of women hearts. Do like and subscribe if you enjoyed this story. Oh, and click on the bell so you get notified when the new episode comes out.